what's up everybody? Welcome to Going Nuts with Glenn and Gracie. I'm Glenn the Baker. And I'm Gracie the Comedian. Uh, we're back. And we're right. back. We had a little break. Fourth of July, you know, yeah, it's a holiday. Fourth of July break. Uh, it may not seem that way because, you know, there's a new episode. There's two new episodes this week. So yeah. anyways, um, hope you catch up on those episodes. Uh, thank you for joining us. Subscribe. Uh, hit that like button. It helps us out, everybody. Exactly. Uh, follow us. Tell your friends. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Follow Gracie. Yeah. Follow me. All right. Exactly. <laughs> Let's follow each other. Follow. Just follow us, and you know you can enjoy Glenn's food and his art. Yeah. I mean, who the hell are we? I mean, I'm a chef, a pastry chef of over 15, 16 years. I who's counting? Yeah. Uh, I've worked in some of the the best places in LA. Uh, I, I bake at home now. I make edibles. I kind of combine the, uh, my, my skills from, from, from then into, um, edibles, uh, now, basically, and, uh, doing some gourmet stuff, if you know what I'm saying. And who the hell is Gracie? Gracie's a comedian, damn it! That's right, and I got actually three shows for this You, you got some shows coming up, exactly. right? Exactly. I have one, actually, at Flappers on Saturday. Flappers, uh, this Saturday in Burbank, everybody. Yes. Go to Flappers. Uh, that is, uh, what's, what's the date on that? Uh, uh that's the 16th? 16th? Oh, I don't even know what the dates are. It's whatever Saturday is. It's Saturday. Uh, it's Saturday. 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 Well, that's that a good was, one. That's a good one. Okay. I was doing another Saturday song. But oh, you were? Good. You were doing Chicago. I was doing Chicago. Who were you doing? I was doing the, the Saturday song, the, the one that De La Soul, um, sampled in the five days of work. Oh. One whole oh, yeah. day of play. My Come on, there. everybody, get your roller skates today. Saturday, <laughs> Saturday. Okay. okay. She was doing Chicago Saturday yes, in the park. I was saying Saturday in the park. Um, um, <clears throat> I don't but know. But anyway, whatever, whatever the Saturdays. Yeah, today. whatever. She's got a show this Saturday at Flappers in Burbank. Everybody, go check her out. And we'll put the yeah. info right there. And then I have another one on the twenty third uh -huh. at Heads or Tails in La Habra. July 23rd at Heads or Tails in La Habra. That's right. right. It's, a it's a fundraiser uh, tribute show to also one of our friends who passed away. Yes, yes. Yeah. Rest in peace to, to, to Oso. And uh, there's a lot of um, tributes and fundraisers going on, <clears throat> including a, um, excuse me, including a GoFundMe. Yeah, there is right? also GoFundMe. Yeah, go check that out. Uh, where can they find that? On Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. On his Facebook, right? Um... Honestly, I don't know. Shoot, I gotta put, I gotta look that up and put that, that up, up here. That. Uh, go on, uh, on his Facebook page though. It's oh yeah, if you go to his um, Carlos also Robledo, right? Yes, if you go to his Facebook page, you'll you can find it there. And then I have a show. I just got booked today for a show in August. Yay! August nineteenth. Where August nineteenth? Where? And that's in Pico Rivera. Pico Rivera. Yeah. Where Sanford's Vintage is one of my favorite record shops. Is that place? Right. You've been to that place that I'm going to go do a show <clears throat> at. Really? Where is it? It's in Pico, Rivera. The well, one I've been to a lot of places in Pico. Which, where? I don't know the name of the place. Give me the address. You said you went there to see somebody show. Oh, okay. That's so um, I'm asking you. You've yeah, been there. Yeah, that's a Mexican restaurant. Okay. I forgot the name of it. Okay. Do you know, do you know the name of it? No, I think he just gave me, uh, he gave me the address. I think our friend Isaac uh, Flacco there. was there. Yeah, in our, in you our, went. And our friend Juan. Yeah, I do, but I don't remember the name of the... Of well, I'm not telling you, asking what the name of the re uh, place is. I just say, where is it at? Where's, where more or less, where is it like on... Uh, Rosemary, between, Rivera. Between, between, between Rosemary and... Uh, Rosemary. Rosemary. Ro Rosemead and like Passons or whatever. It's off of Passons. Oh, okay. Right off of Passons. You know where it is? It's right by, oh. it's right by the jail. The jail. Yeah, I didn't know there was a jail there was either. The jail there? But I found out one night. But that's a whole other is it show. By, is it by Dino's Chicken? No, next oh. over. Okay. Uh, Dino's Chicken is Telegraph. We're talking Washington. Oh, it's on Washington. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I know where it's probably with that. It's okay. kind of hidden. Okay. Like really hidden. Well, there's I don't know like why some I was thinking it was Telegraph. Okay. There's, there's some apartment uh, complexes right in front of it. Anyways, great spot. Yeah. Okay. It's a great little spot for uh, for a comedy show. And uh, I, I'm guessing that the same dude who is, is running it? Yeah. That's his room? Do you, mm -hmm. do you, what, what's his name? Paul Noller. Is that what it is? Nolar? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Damn it, Gracie. Shit, yeah. man. 
This is what she does all the time, guys. She books shows. She don't know what the where the fuck they are. Who booked her? <laughs> Sometimes she doesn't know when they are. Well, I, I hey, I just get some, a, a DM me and I just say yes. Okay. I shouldn't do that. Maybe That's some stranger is like, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm going to the show, and then it's like I'm do doing it, and I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't look like. Yeah. This yeah. is like a house. You know, so. And you know what? Maybe that's a good problem, you know, because you can't keep track of all these shows that you're doing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, maybe it's I just. I had more. Oh man. I'm gonna have to get myself an assistant. Yeah. So you know Why how to, you know how to type? No. <laughs> yeah. I type. You know. Fuck off. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, Anyways, no, um, let's talk about something really cool. All right. Like we said last time on the last show. Uh, Gracie, next time you see Gracie, she'll be a year older. Oh, yes. And huge happy belated birthday to, uh, to Gracie. Thank you. Uh, who is now 66 years old. That's young, right. 66 years young, or as she likes to say. No, bitch, no. <laughs> I was going to say sexy six. Oh, sexy she six. she said old bitch, so we'll go with that. <laughs> uh, this old bitch celebrated 66 years old. No, this year's Young. <laughs> And um, <laughs> so, how does it feel? Um, I don't know. I feel the same. I had a facial. Okay. Does my skin look better? Yeah. Or sure, it, it didn't look bad to begin with, but um. So I did have a facial on Sunday. And this your is this your fr same friend that does your facials all the time? Yeah. Okay. What's her name again? Jennifer. Jennifer. I remember Jennifer. What's Thera up? Therapy by Jennifer. Therapy by Jennifer. Nice. Look her up. It's a therapy by Jennifer. So that's all you did for your birthday was no, got a that, No, that was yesterday. Oh, okay. On my birthday, I actually, I actually did do something. What did you do for your birthday? Strip club. I Strip went. Strip club. To the happy place on earth. Oh, you went to um, the the mouse house. I went to the mouse house, and mm -hmm. then I got a pin that says, "Happy birthday, <clears throat> Gracie." Every time and you 66. go there, every time you go there, you tell them that it's your birthday, and they give you this pin. This button, yeah, to wear, yeah, and that means that everybody in that place has to tell you happy birthday. Do you know how many when you when they see you, anybody who's working there? Basically. Okay, do you know how many happy birthdays I got that day? Okay, don't tell me. Okay, so like I said, you wear this this button, and everybody has to say happy birthday to you. They're like required. Um, I don't know, a hundred. Three. Three. <laughs> Three. What? It was the waitress uh -huh. at the um, restaurant. Uh huh. And one of the janitors, and one of the guys from uh, the canoes. Really? Yes. That's terrible, Disneyland. <laughs> terrible. All right. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, it's because they have a bunch of new people now. Because remember the ones who probably had been there for years and years had it when COVID came and they closed it. They probably went and found other jobs. <sighs> So now it's like a whole new crew. Oh man, are they are they allowing facial hair? Oh, they're yeah. lousy men wearing ponytails with the bows and lipstick. See, you know what? So as, it's just even has changed. You know, even as a you know liberal dude or whatever you want to call me, uh, I don't think that's appropriate for Disneyland. You know, um, people like that shouldn't be working. <laughs> that way you can get more happy birthdays. I mean, come on, three. Yeah, three. But you know what? I got like a tons of happy birthdays on Facebook. Of course. And social media. Great. And I'm still getting them. I got another one today. Yeah. I, I Thank you, everybody, for telling me. I, you know, actually taking the time to say happy birthday to me. Awesome. And I thanked every single person. Cool. You even thanked everybody on on, on our page. Yeah, our page. Your I, page. I, we put something up and then a lot of people, you know, Thank said you. happy birthday. I hope you responded to yes. everyone. It was only a couple. <laughs> <laughs> only two. Was it more than three? <laughs> you mean Dis Disneyland? I Dino swear, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Three people. Come the, on, man. The first time I did it, man, I was getting happy birthday on everything, every right, everything. But this time, and I was like, and I told my daughter, go, we're laughing because I was like, no one really said happy birthday. She goes, yeah, mom. You know what they? Because my she has a pass. Uh -huh. She goes, oh yeah, it's changed a lot from before. So she that's what she was. That was her opinion that a lot of the people who were dedicated and worked there had to like leave maybe all the people from knots went over there they're working there at disneyland now <laughs> oh, no. but anyway i had a great day and so we, when we went on i had to talk to my nephew to get on the canoes uh-huh snow grandma i don't want to go in the canoes but i think he thought it was a uh, kayak you know 
Um, so then Did when he's kayaking, yeah, then when he saw it, he's like, okay, grandma, I'll go. So mm -hmm. we went on that. And then we went on the island. Jessica says she's never been on the island. What? Never been on the island. Is that, how is, what? So how we, does a person with not just one, but two Disneyland Instagram accounts never been on the island? Exactly. That is sacrilege. <laughs> So we went to the island and she and Julian had the best time. He was running around, going inside the caves and going on the bridges and yeah, she's never been on Yeah, I've been on the island. I mean, all you gotta do is go on the raft. You don't have to canoe over there. They have that little raft. Yeah, that's that what you, you go. You just go over. So we did that and went on the canoes and we wanted to go on the big, the pirate ship, but by the time we got off the canoes, the pirate ship had already um, stopped running. Uh-huh. And uh, let's talk about the only thing that matters over there the Star Wars stuff oh did you go on any of that so I went on the new ride I totally left we totally left out because it was a hundred and one minutes to wait for that ride cool but we know somebody and we got on the ride we didn't have to wait oh wow we just had to wait for her to get to where we were at and I told my daughter do you think maybe we could have just been online this whole time mm -hmm. as long as we waited for her to come to where we were at mm -hmm. but anyway um, it was a great adventure to go on that new ride Cool, and you're, so. we're talking about, it's called Rise of the Resistance. Yes, they capture you, you get captured. Yeah. And then they try to, we escape. Right. Oh, they, we do escape and then we are free. Right. So. So you, did you, you like that, you enjoyed that. Yeah, first it just goes, um, I think you're gonna get sick at this part, just, but I, I didn't get sick. It just, cause it goes. Uh-huh. And you look out the window and you can see the, you know, universe and all that. Yeah. You get captured by um, the First Order, and then uh, you you see all those stormtroopers at that one yeah. at one point. And you posted up a video, but I it was kind of hard. I would just kind of like real fast. Yeah, most people, you know, will take a shot of the front part, you know. But Gracie, well, whatever. I was just sending it to you. I wasn't putting it on social media. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Just something I was showing that like, hey, I got captured. <laughs> you know, I wasn't gonna go put that on Facebook or any of that. I so. No, that's fine. I just showed it. I was sending it to you. Yeah, I know. You You would think you'd send something nicer. But anyways, uh, uh, I'm glad you had uh, a good time over there. Did yeah. you Did you buy anything? Uh, any souvenirs? Is no. it What is this hat from? Disneyland. From then? That's yeah, the my name on the back. So you did buy something? Yeah, I bought a hat. Okay, cool. And I'm going to go two more times. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wear my hat two more times. Um, what happens is that they have the resident um, special again, $83 a day, but you have to buy three days. But seriously, only three times? I mean, come on. Come on, really? I know. I think uh, many years ago we went and I didn't want a button, you know, I was being a jerk. Oh yeah, I remember that. And then I decided to get one on the way out, just as a souvenir, right? I think I got more hello, or more happy birthdays on the way out that day than Gracie did being there the whole day. <laughs> exactly. You know, because I'm talking to Liza, we're walking out, you know, the parking attendant, the mm -hmm. the guys at the the little stands, the souvenir stands as you're walking out, uh, somebody picking up some trash. Yeah, everybody. Uh, did I mention the parking attendant, the guy driving the shuttle? Exactly. Uh, that was just like within half an hour, that was when we were leaving. So you mean to tell me only three um, I know. Times. Well, that's okay. I'll wear it next time to see if I get more. No, no, I won't wear it anymore. Can you? Can you, can you wear that? There's no date on it. Right. Who's going to know? I say you wear it again. And count and how many. And count how many. Do an experiment. Yeah. Hey, that's what I should do on Twitter. I'm going to go like this. I go, I'll do a Twitter, uh, like a little meeting. Go, hey, so last time I was here and I wore this badge, only three people said happy birthday. Okay, I'm wearing my badge again today. And let's see how many I get. There you go. Should I do that? Yeah, that's some content. Okay, I got some content. Anyways. So Glenn had me, so Glenn, let's talk about this movie that you had me watch, that you rented. <sighs> Did it, I rent something? Yes, it was called The Shining Veil. Oh, what that's a... That, what, what did they make? What year did they make that movie? That's not a movie, that's a... Um, it's not? No, that's a TV series, right? No, it's a movie. The Shining Veil is a, it's a TV series. Oh, with, uh, that was a Courtney TV Cox, series. Courtney Cox. Oh yeah, right? Courtney Cox. Oh yeah, I, that's. The, I'm sorry, I got the wrong show. Yeah, that's not a, a movie. Oh, that was really good. Did you see it? Yeah, I, I have I had to binge it. I couldn't stop watching it. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I but saw you did I, it? I saw the beginning. I like the premise, and then um, 
I forgot what I, I did. I, I got busy. He tells me to watch it and then he doesn't even watch it. Gosh. It was really good. It was a series. It was really, really good. It's about mental illness. Yeah. It's about uh, mental illness, uh, haunted houses. A family moves to a small town into a house in which terrible atrocities have taken place. But nobody seems to notice except for Pat, who's convinced she's either depressed, possessed. So yeah, it deals with mental illness and uh it starts off like what it says about when it, what what happens when people are depressed and when people are possessed and it's pretty much the same thing you know like the same things happen so it's a little um sensitive i think mm -hmm. so uh, they even have like a little disclaimer before oh, yeah, the show do. like you know if you're yeah. sensitive to this kind of stuff uh sorry or whatever it says yeah but it's interesting that they have to put stuff like that now because yeah. uh you know that's they don't that's get in the, trouble yeah okay. and then we watched a movie <laughs> then we watched a movie which i got the name i forgot well did name. you okay back to the the shining veil you said you liked it i enjoyed it I really okay liked cool it. so i'm gonna keep watching it yeah keep watching it you'll like it all right it's really good and it looks creepy too yeah greg kinnear i haven't seen him in like something in Ages, right? Since New Year's Eve or something. Isn't it that movie? It's like Little Miss Sunshine. No, it was, some, it was on New Year's Eve or something, I think, after that. What the hell is New Year's Eve? Yeah, there was a movie called New Year's Eve. What? Yeah. Okay, it's so one called Look it up if you Christmas? Like yeah, it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, it's a it's Christmas a, movie a, called New Year's Eve. No, it's not a Christmas movie. It's, in, it's New Year's... It's called... Oh, gosh. It's about a bunch of different people and New Year's, what happens to them on New Year's. Oh, okay, it's one of those. Yeah, it's one of those... It's a romantic um, something you would never watch. Okay, well, anyways. Oh, so what was the other movie you had me watch? I didn't have you watch anything. What do you keep saying that I have you well, watch? Well, you don't have me watch. You mention it, you go, oh, I... I'm um, like, hey, you know, I rented a movie. It's there if you want to watch it. Yeah, that's what he tells me. So, I watch it. Okay, cool. Because I want you to get your money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want me to get my money's worth at a that five ninety nine dollars uh, rental. Oh. 48-hour okay. rental. So, anyways, yeah. what was the other movie? I don't even remember. You don't remember what it was? No. It was about that. It was well, like. Well, do you? It was. It was kind of bizarre. It was like. Sex wasn't sex anymore. The only way they had sex is when they were cutting herself. Oh, okay. Uh, Crimes of the Future. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, David Cronenberg, okay? That's the guy that. Um, do you remember a movie you saw a couple years ago or many years ago called Drive? I about, believe so, yeah. Um, it's about people like having sex and crashing their cars and, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. it wasn't called no. Drive. It was called Crash. Oh, yeah, Crash. Yeah, I remember. It's David Cronenberg. Also, um, like, he did movies like Dead Ringers. Oh, and The Fly with Jeff Goldblum, okay? So he does a lot of weird shit. Yeah, this, but this movie, if you get a chance to see it, it is freaking bizarre. Yeah, Crimes of the Future. Um, basically, you know, humans have evolved, uh, you know, they're growing new organs things like that and this revolves around a couple who uh who did they do they're like a sideshow right yeah they 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 surgically remove these new organs and you know show them it's like a freak show basically. yeah exactly it's really bizarre you gotta watch it it's really it's, good <laughs> yeah it's like it's bizarre <laughs> it's uh uh is it it's like a world that where no pain exists either. yeah that's you what know? it is not no pain huh yeah like we've we've conquered pain but you know because of that we've evolved differently and uh, we're freaks now we're mutants yes and that's a that's what's going to happen eventually right <laughs> so like so if someone scratches you in the arm like oh that's like giving somebody a hickey huh huh because <laughs> it's about sex the pain is about they don't have normal sex like anymore. most of cronenberg's work there's like so like a sexual yeah, sexual element thing. to it and um and that's what really I was... really good yeah. <laughs> it's just... so anyways uh gracie what what are, what are these uh, shiny things over here these uh these pastel things over here that oh, you... this, oh my 99 cent store let's thing? do it 99 cent okay, store I want time, you to look right? at this. that's what gracie does on every show guys she goes to a cheap store and buys well, these were these crap. are cheap. These are four ninety nine, I think, or three ninety nine. And then she lies about going to the store. I just have to see that. I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it was cool. But I'm not gonna let Glenn. I'm gonna see if Glenn can figure out what it is. 
I'm going to show the audience. Is this 99 is. cent store or, or not? It is not. In, uh, yes, I got the 99 cent store. Okay. Shut your eyes for a moment because I'm going to show the guests. Or shut your, move your head. I want to show our guest what they are. And I'm going to see. They're candles. I want to see if he gets what they are. Okay, Glenn. Can't, oh, can't look at them that close. <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm stuck in the cord. Sorry. I'm supposed to guess what this is. Yeah. Okay. But I can't look at it. Okay, let me let me take one out. Let me take yeah, I'll take one out. And this is from the 99 cent store, or it's yeah. not? Or no, it some... is from the, this is from the 99 okay, cent so store. Okay, so this is 99 cent store moment, and mm -hmm. I'm supposed to guess, yeah, guess what, what this is. crap is. It just says, follow your bliss on here. Mm -hmm. And there's no other label. Is it a uh, powder? Is that what you Topping guess? powder? Is that what you're going to yeah. guess? Yeah, powder. Powder? Follow your bliss. Of your butt? <laughs> your bliss butt? Yeah. No, look at this. Oh, I can't take one out. They're Kleenex. Oh, okay. So you know how usually you buy Kleenex and they're in a box? Mm-hmm. Well, these are Kleenex that are in a tube. Okay, and why are they different colors? Because there's, they yeah, might have different the rooms. Different scents? No, they're different rooms. They probably have different stains on them. Follow your yeah. bliss. Yeah, they all say follow your bliss. But yeah, um, so you really wouldn't have known this was like Kleenex, huh? But they're like tissues. No. But you know when you get Kleenex, they're always in a box? Well, these are not in a box. These are in a tube. They're in a tube. So it's like more decorating. See how pretty that looks? I suppose. Yeah. Follow your bliss. And it takes less room. Like you put that on your um, nightstand. It takes less room, that stupid big old box of Kleenex. Or, yes. that, or that little square one that you get. It's still it's less room. All right. So, pretty cool, huh? I actually think that is kind of cool. <laughs> Instead of having a box, you've got this tube and it says, follow your bliss. You know, pick that booger. Right? Yeah, pick yeah. that booger. So I'm going to follow my bliss right hey, now. Hey, um, how are the Dodgers doing? Dodgers are in first place. And we are headed into All-Star break next week. Um, I found some uh, tickets for the All-Star game. Uh, 375 bucks a piece to wow. sit in Pavilion. But 400 bucks. Uh, I was going to take my, my parents. I'm thinking to myself, you know, when, when, when does this happen, you know? When's the next All-Star game at Dodger Stadium going to be? The way they select the, the, the stadiums is, is ridiculous. I mean, there's no um, real, like, democratic way of doing it it's not mm -hmm. like sequential or something i've seen some stadiums do it twice within like five years so it's just a matter of who wants okay. to do it and then okay. they just pick the stadium the last time the dodgers did it was 1980 okay. uh and uh it was you could see some footage of it they had uh, like a lot of disney stuff well you know the whole disney crew was out there mickey mouse and whatever Anyways, it's back at Dodger Stadium, uh, 400 bucks a ticket, and then we just bowed out. We're like, let's watch it at home. You know, so we're going to watch <laughs> it on the, on the TV much better. We're going to enjoy it that way. I mean, if we really go to the stadium, I mean, who are we going to go see? We're going to see Mookie Betts. I know Tony Gonsolin's going to start the game. Uh, Kershaw's going to be there, and so is Trey Turner. And that's pretty much it, you know. Um, we're gonna see a bunch of other players we don't yeah. really give a shit about. I mean, I'm not gonna go over there and root for Manny Machado. I mean, come on. Uh, but anyways, I do want the National League to win, but it's like we're better off watching it at home. Oh, Why am I gonna spend all that money? It's like almost a thousand bucks. Twelve hundred dollars for three tickets. Oh wow. And uh, like I said, when are we gonna get the chance to do that again? Probably never. But so what? We're gonna watch it at home. And why do you ask about the Dodgers? Well, because I, um, I saw an article about the peanut man. Remember the peanut pitcher? Psh, the man who used to just throw peanuts? He's yep. been, he was been doing, he's actually been doing this since 1962. Yep. Throwing the peanuts, collecting the money, or you know, whatever. You know that he's not allowed to do that anymore. No. I didn't. No. Yeah. It's, well, I haven't seen them do that in, in years. I mean, there's the original guy, and then there's a bunch of people who, who can do it. Yeah, you know, but there's I mean, the, the one guy who's been doing it since, since 1960. And they should all be able to, to do it. That I think that's a qualification if you're going to be a peanut vendor at the stadium is you got to be able to be a pitcher. 
Yeah, but anyway, they can't do that anymore. Why so not? And that, this guy has actually been on Johnny Carson. He's been like on TV and everything. But yeah, it don't matter where you're he's not at. Not allowed to throw anymore. Don't matter where you're at. Boom! He he got you. He nailed you. Yeah, it's you that. You just the, hold your hand out and boom. Yeah, the levy companies told him that he couldn't do that anymore. Cause cause of COVID. No, just you're throwing you're throwing germs. I don't know, but anyway, he's not allowed to do it. Or just because of the times, you know, you might yeah. hit somebody. Somebody might get mad. And they're going to sue you. But if you do this, it's 1962. You know, you, you, you throw the peanuts, you accidentally hit somebody, and they, they, and they sue. I mean, that's, that's, what, that's, what's, that's what's happening right now. And what else is happening? We're going to take a break, all right? Don't go away. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you in a minute. Break time. And we're back. Yes, we're back. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for not leaving. Yeah. <laughs> so what else did we do uh, this past weekend? Uh, we crazy? went to a museum. Yes, we finally, finally went to the the Cheech Center uh, out, out here in Riverside, California. Yeah. The new uh, museum by Cheech Marin. It's basically celebrating uh, Chicano art. It's a lot of his uh, uh, collection. He's a big uh, supporter and collector of Chicano art. Always has been. Uh, he's had he's had several books um, about about the subject. I remember seeing um, uh, a lot of his uh, collection uh, in uh, at the fair, at L.A. County Fair, like two years ago. Really. Yeah, he had a big... Uh, was I there? Yeah, you were there. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, you, you, were, you were there uh, physically. Uh, I didn't, you know. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Cheech, a uh, big supporter uh, of Chicano art. And uh, yeah, the Cheech Center, man. Uh, yeah. let, let, let's talk about that. I've got a lot of cool footage uh, there. Um, Can I you know, up? here's a, a little... Picked up some souvenirs there. Uh, what were you saying? You talk, You were talking about his books, and I actually have one of his books. Yeah, okay, there you go. Gracie has one of his, uh, what, is, what book is that? Chicano Visions. American Painters <laughs> on the, on the, uh, so anyway. Huh? <laughs> what? So anyway, this book. <laughs> can, I can I read it? Yes. May I read it? Why? So I can tell them what it's called. On the verge, what? <laughs> <laughs> I like to do things properly. Oh, sorry. Chicano Visions, American Painters on the Verge by Cheech Marin. That's the book she's talking about. Um, where did you where'd you get that book? At South um Self uh, Help Graphics. Self, right there on East LA. Self Help yeah. Graphics in he's, East LA. He, he's even so he even signed the book. Oh cool. And there and some of the paintings that are actually in this book were in the museum. Yeah. And I have some of the um actually some of the art when this, when I did get the book, some of the artists were there, and I got their autographs. Cool. So, let, may yeah. I? Yes, you may. So, this is a painting uh, by Frank Romero, and it was it was there. A lot of his stuff was there. This one's called Downtown, and it just says Gracie. And then he's got his own little signature there, uh, the way he does it. Pretty cool, right? And, yeah, a lot of Frank Romero stuff was uh, was there. I think there's, there was more. There, let me see if I can. Oh, here's another one. Another what? Another autograph. Another autograph. And who is that by? I don't have glasses on, so I can't <laughs> see. But it's in Spanish. Yeah. It's welcome. In... Welcome to the show, I know. Everybody. It's in Spanish. Gracie, I have no idea. I should have marked right. them out. Uh, yeah, it's in Spanish. The painting's called Blue Dog. Okay? Blue Dog is the name of the painting. Um, I, it's in Spanish. The guy's name is Gilbert Lujan. Is that the Spanish part you were no, talking he, about? No, he writes the what, write what he, read what he wrote. Okay, well, uh, what he wrote was in Spanish. Oh, I yeah. get it. Okay, so it says, Para Gracie, con cariño y abrazos fuertes. Siempre. Um, so, what do you mean? That looks like something made for you. Made for you. May 4th. Oh, May 4th. Mayo 4. Oh. 
you went on the fourth, I, I guess. guess so. Anyways, it says for Gracie oh, yeah, with single, um, like a single de mile thing, maybe. For Gracie with love and uh, hard um, hugs, always. May fourth. Oh, shit, I want to like. Anyways, Gilbert Lujan. That's um a cool um little uh autograph there it's from his painting Blue Dog. You can figure through the book if you want. To see if there's any more. Um, <clears throat> sure. <laughs> Oh, there's another one. Yeah, here's another autograph, and this is from Vincent Valdez, all right? Vincent Valdez had my favorite painting there at the, uh, at the Chief Center. And like I said, as you watch this video, and if you're listening, watch us on YouTube, subscribe, and uh, you, you'll see all the, the video footage I took from uh, our trip there. But yeah, Vincent Valdez did this painting called uh, Kill the Pachuco Bastard. It's, uh, you know, like a Zoot Suit Riot um, painting. Uh, really nice, really graphic. Oh, very good graphic. Uh, that was there. And anyways, it's in this book here. And uh, he autographed it. And this is 11-2, November 2nd. Well, I don't know what day it was. Do you know anything, Gracie? It was in 2002. <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, yeah. Well, no, there's look at Cheech. Uh, maybe that guy was just saying May 4th. Maybe like the, maybe he was saying, like, may the 4th be with you. Sure, in November. Okay, anyways, there it is. Vincent Valdez, and there's there's his painting. Uh, and there's his autograph. Very nice, Gracie. Now, Gracie, uh, when you were going to the Cheech Center, when I took you there, did you know that you were going to see works from these artists. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy part, I really didn't. But you know what, I did look at all the names of the artists to see if I knew anybody. Uh -huh. Pat Patsy Valdez, uh, he had her stuff there. Um, uh, who else? Uh, the guy who... Um, Chaz. I got another one from Chaz. From Chaz? Yes. Can you can you show those to the um, to the studio audience? <laughs> so here, this one, one from Chaz. That's the artist name, Chaz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. And here's Margaret. I have Margaret Garcia. Oh, more autographs. Yeah, more autographs. So all those artists were at Self Help Graphics that day. Yes, they were. Cool, and that was the for the for the the premiere of his book. I'm yes. guessing, right? Yes. So as you can see, Gracie's also wearing a cool uh, shirt from the Cheech. You want to you show that off, yeah, Gracie? Yeah, here's this guy. Oh yeah, here's my shirt. Yeah, Wayne Alanis Healy, he, his stuff was there. So I bought a t-shirt. Yeah, the colors uh, is are orange, you know, for the Cheech Center, and uh, she got this nice purple one. Because they didn't have the orange in my size. Yeah, those were sold out. Those that, That's like the, the, the main color. But uh, yeah, Healy's stuff was there. This, okay, so this painting was there. I'll show that one off. Show that off in your book. It's nice, you know, that you've got all those uh, autographs, you know, paintings, yeah. and autographs there, and then you actually got to see those things in person. In person, that is that's um, what, that's really cool. So, and she didn't even know it. I didn't even know that. And you know what? This book is twenty years old. There you go. And then it says right there because uh, when Cheech signed it, he said, "Enjoy Cheech." 2002. 2002. So, so that was twenty years ago. Nice. So 20 years later, Cheech finally has this, his stuff. In a museum. His collection of all these awesome Chicano artists at the Cheech Center, which I recommend you guys all oh, go. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful. Um, really cool and place. The, and they even have a lot of um, glass blowing stuff. Yeah, there's sculptures. There's paintings. There's um, one, of the, one of the cool things there is they had a lot of lenticular stuff. The artist name escapes me at the moment, but uh, a lot of uh, yeah lenticular stuff. You know, where you walk by it and it uh, it, oh, changes, yeah, it changes, yeah. including a really big one from uh, like look like two stories tall. And that three D. Yeah, that that stuff. So I got a, I got myself a little uh, a little notepad. Just a just a note. It, everything is kind of pricey. Yeah, everything. Uh, okay, it's fifteen dollar admission. All right. And they give you, you know, like a two-hour, uh, you know, window, which I didn't see anyone like enforcing. But two two hours is all you need, yeah. pretty much. It's all, it's it's just two floors. Two floors, and a little gift shop. I had to get me one of these. All right, this is a little Cheech Beanie air freshener. <laughs> 
And then this is uh, uh, the suspenders and the shirt, the cheech look right there. I and this really cool pen, all right? All for a low price of like 80 bucks, <laughs> including uh, this, uh, this oh, cool bag. Oh, dollars for everything? No, it was like 70 bucks. Oh, the air fresheners are $15. That's a nice bag, man. Look at that. Look at that. It's got the Cheech Center in the back, and it's got the, that old-school-looking uh, Cheech there. Uh, in, in, a really, in a really nice neighborhood in Riverside, in the whole it's Mission. It's right there by the Mission Inn. Right there by the Mission Inn. And um, who else was there? What, what, what other artist was there? Um, George Yepes, all right? He did a painting called... Uh, La Pistola y el Corazón, basically. And I think that's the name of the painting. Either way, Los Lobos used that painting on the cover of their album with the, with the same name. Speaking of which, let's do this vinyl moment, huh? Yeah. Oh, I, you know what? Uh, should I show them that picture? What picture? Oh, the, you already have that picture. I have oh, what gonna, picture? What are you talking about? Your, what your are book. you talking about? I don't know. Anyways, uh, what did I do, Gracie? I thought I'd bring albums that uh, are artistic or reflect mm -hmm. art, if you will. And uh, bring out your book. A lot of them are in this book here. This is a really cool coffee table book. It's called "A Hundred Best Album Covers." and the stories behind them, behind the, behind the sleeves. All right, so one of them, and I don't have this album, but I gotta you know, bring it out here. One of the albums that's in here is um, Los Lobos, all right? La Pistola del Corazón, featuring the artwork of George Yepes. And all right, and so his, that was there. And that was at the museum. And that was at the museum, that was at the Cheech Center. It was one of the first uh, paintings, like on the on the right hand side. Beautiful to look at in person. This is a great book, all right? If you like albums and album covers, or if, you know, even if you don't, you know, you wanna hear some cool stories, they put the cover on there and then they put like a whole story with like little facts oh, wow. in here. So let me read off a little bit of, uh, the, of facts from here. Mm -hmm. Or actually I like how it says specification. The artist, Los Lobos, Title of the album, La Pistola y el Corazón. Design, Jerry Hayden. Artist, George Yepes. Record label slash records, Warner Brothers. Anyways, it says acrylic paint. The painting was drone, was done, excuse me, what an idiot. The painting was done in acrylic paint on artist canvas size, approximately 20 inches, 20 by 30 inches. The artwork was put together in the traditional way. First full size, Roughs were created with color photocopies, Pantone papers, and PMTs. Then finished artwork was constructed with the film overlays, positional guidelines, and type. I don't know what the hell any of that stuff means. I don't either. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if he did this for them, and then he did a bigger version, or if they used the version for their for their uh, album. Anyways, it says George Yepes. George Yepes was born in East LA. He grew up as a neighbor and friend of band member Louis Perez. So he's he friends with them. Uh, he worked in the financial world, but in his spare time, he became a member of uh, Los Streetscapers, which were a group of muralists oh, okay. in LA. Anyways, it says here also, it is believed that he is still a painter, but his whereabouts today are unknown. So anyhow, uh, yeah, I wanted to show that. I wish I had that album. I don't even have it on CD. Um, our friend Marco and Rudy used to play that album uh, a lot back when we, um, when we used to hang out. Anyways, I'll go into some of the albums that I do have that are in that book. We'll start with this. The Clash, London Calling. Um, this is an iconic freaking cover. See if you can find that in there. Is this in alphabetical order? Uh, no, just flip through it. <laughs> oh. Or if you want to look at the index in the back or, well, or something. What you should have done is you should have like put little... Labeled it, yeah, yes. right, with post-it notes and stuff. Anyways, yeah, iconic cover right there. Uh, that's Paul Simonon, basically, in concert, about to smash Page his bass. Page 94 and 95. About to smash his bass. And the way they did this, this, you know, this logo, this type... Uh, was after the Elvis Presley album. 
so yeah, this is basically an homage to the Elvis Presley, Elvis Presley's first album. Same color, same thing, black and white photo. But it's this really cool picture of Paul Simon on about to smash his bass. Anyways, next one. one. Nope, you can't find is it. it. It's in the clash on page 94 and 95. Pages mm -hmm. that. You're oh, here it is. Oh, the wonder. There it is. Yay. I found it. And there's the Elvis cover right there. And, uh, yeah, pretty cool, okay, right? So who's next so I can look it up really fast? How about, um, you can, you can find this, right? No I know. Easily. You just passed it up. Oh, I did? I'm just going to go to the back. It's Led Zeppelin. Houses of the Holy. Anyways, yeah, like I said, Led oh, Zeppelin. Gosh. He has, like, he's in a bunch of different pages. Houses of the Holy. Another great album cover right there. Oh, is this it? Yep. I mean, what would you think? What do you think of uh, this cover? You know, nowadays. I mean, yeah, it's a bunch of naked little kids. Oh yeah, that would be forbidden. Now. And uh, but um, it really is a nice cover. It's a cool cover. I'll read off something from there. Here's the gatefold. All right, and I'll have uh, you know better pictures of that. Let me read something off from there. What does it say? about Led Zeppelin, Houses of the Holy. At 4 a.m. every morning for a week, three adults and two children were sprayed silver and gold from head to toe and driven from the hotel to the location of the shoot to await a glorious sunrise that never happened. It was wet and cold and uh, sounds like uh, it was a big mess and then they all got paid 100 pounds for that shoot, all these little kids. They're not, they look like they're naked, but they're not. They have like a bodysuit on. Yeah, so it's like this whole alien thing. And the mm -hmm. idea for the cover comes in part from Arthur C. Clarke's book, Childhood's End. Uh, who's uh, Arthur C. Clarke. He wrote 2001 Space Odyssey. But anyways, yeah, that's a cool cover right there. Um, if you find this is good, if not, we'll just flip through them. There's um, I Wish You Were Here, Pink Floyd. Um, a very iconic cover as well. I don't have the one with all the... Oh, he's in a lot of pages too. Yeah, I got the insert for that. I don't think this is an original. But anyways, continuing. Oh, I was going to find it, but he, they're not going to bunch of pages. Yeah, well, why don't you hold on right here. Let's, let's stop right here on this one. Because that's next. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, right I, am, I have my finger there, Glenn. Okay. Don't worry about it. And that is um, this one right here, The Cars. Candy O. All right. Great freaking cover. A beautiful cover. And here's... And this is uh, from pinup artist Alberto Vargas. You want to read a little thing about it? Yeah, Alberto Vargas painted uh, in watercolor on illustration board. And uh, the rest is all kind of drawn by hand. And uh, yeah, they just basically hired him to do this really cool cover. Alberto Joaquin Vargas E. Chavez was born in uh, Arequipa, Peru in 1896. He studied in Europe until 1916 when he went to World War I. Uh, he moved to New York, began a career in illustration that was to delight millions. Uh, the Vargas girl. I mean, that's what he kind of invented. He invented that that look, and that's what the cars used on Candy O on the cover of Candy O. So moving along, this is uh, Bill Evans and Jim Hall uh, undercurrent, and for some reason they have this picture at the very end of uh, this book, but that is a beautiful cover right there. It's got this uh, just this woman kind of floating. They don't even have his Floating name on Floating under, underneath the water. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Bill Evans. Yeah. Jim Hall. Oh, maybe it's under Jim Hall. Undercurrent is the name of, of that album, and this is the uh, the MoFi version. No, either so one's name's in uh, here. Yeah. See? Do you see it? Uh, no, but the picture's back here. Oh. Well, that's why. The picture's here, but it's not. There's yeah, no... Yeah, the picture's a very, very last photo. And there's no story in to the it. book, but uh, I'm sure there is. But no, their name's not in it, honestly. Okay. Well, anyways, moving along, 
Uh, Strange Days, The Doors. Uh, that's a pretty iconic cover. The only story I know behind this is they wanted to copy a Fellini movie. I mean, they wanted it to look like a Fellini movie. Uh, they were, well, at least Ray Manzarek and, and Jim were, were film buffs. You know, they met at film school. Is it this one? Yeah, yeah there it is. Strange Days, my favorite uh, Doors album, I think. Yeah, for sure. You gotta read some. It's pretty. It's interesting what you have to lose. Um. Well, there's a lot of shit here. You know, the midgets. Bill Harvey. I went up to this strange residential hotel on Broadway around 70th Street. Very, very odd place. It's just talking about the shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, the photography was done by Joel Brodsky. Designed by William Harvey. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Continuing. Yes. Here's another cool cover. And that's who? This is Super Tramp, uh, Breakfast in America. Uh, I love this cover. I mean, Breakfast in America. I mean, what, oh. what, what else there? You know, it's got a, this crazy looking lady like looking like the, the Statue of Liberty holding uh, some breakfast there. And then the skyline back there is made to look like, uh, you know, table stuff, you know, salt, pepper shakers and... Mm -hmm. Things like that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Here's in the book. You want to read anything from the book? Sure, I will read a little something from the book. Coffee Shop. The band initially saw the cover as an airbrush illustration, but with the help of uh, some Jean-Paul Goud images torn out of Esquire, uh, Mike Haggerty persuaded them to do it as a photograph. So it's a, oh, wow. it's a, it's a photo. Breakfast in America. Super Tramp. And I had to bring this album back. Gracie, I know you've seen it before. The first time I brought it, you went crazy. Um, I don't know if you're gonna go crazy again. <laughs> crazy. Let me just flip through here. It just goes straight, straight to it. Instead okay, so you don't of, want me to uh, get all crazy. You, what is that? Oh my God. It's not Tom Jones, is it? It's not Tom Jones. I don't think Tom Jones... Uh, oh. I'm just saying Tom Jones had uh, artistic covers unless you know um i mean they were just him <laughs> that's is, true is that art I mean, maybe depends i can't find it but anyways uh see you should just look uh, why don't you just look at the index look at one of the most iconic album covers of all time guys. george michaels the rolling stones oh, sticky sure. fingers i mean come on right here we're talking um andy warhol oh my gosh there's a bunch of pages sticky fingers and there it is. Here's an original. I've got an original with um, with the zipper, working zipper. Everybody, there it is, <laughs> working zipper. And then of course it also has the little belt buckle right here. This is how you can tell it's one of the first. Underneath the belt buckle will be um, is where the sticky fingers is uh, located at on the belt buckle. So then you you know you open this up and. Kaboom. <laughs> and uh, the story behind this is, uh, well, this is Andy, Andy Warhol. You know, they uh, asked him, uh, you know, do a cover for us. I think he used several models from his, uh, his factory. And uh, it's said that no one knows exactly who that is. It could be a variety of, or maybe a combination of... Uh, of models, you know, the oh, front and the back right there. But anyways, there I it is. found it. Sticky fingers, rolling stones. You want to read something from it? Oh, I think I said enough, actually. I oh. mean, oh, here we go. The photo session. Andy Warhol took the cover shot himself. Uh, many people assume that the model in the jeans is Mick. Uh, it's not. Uh, Glenn O'Brien, one of Warhol's assistants, recalled, I was at the factory when Andy was photographing the cover. He first used Jed Johnson as the model for the front cover, wearing the jeans that, the, that had the, zip, the, the zipper, and then he approached me and asked me to drop my trousers and pose for the inner sleeve. So that would be, um, you know, um, this part right here. Oh. So, yeah, so to find these, Gracie, you know, with the zipper and all that is, is still, um, it's, not, it's not that hard. Um, I forgot how much I paid for this. I didn't even pay 20 bucks for this one. Oh. And uh, the, you know, the vinyl is in 
nice condition. And there's the buckle right there. You know, it comes off like that. Be careful. You don't want to. And let mess me see it what up. else. Oh yeah, the original sleeve is right here. With um, the guys on the back. All right, and there it is. All right, artistic album covers on the vital moment. Those those are all uh, albums that I own that are in, in this, this book. book. And then I said, well, what's something that I like? Or something that Gracie would like that's not in that book. What I think is uh, pretty iconic. It's a no-brainer, guys. Everybody has this album. It's right there. Uh, Herb Albert in the Quanta Brass. Whipped Cream and other delights. This is still one of my favorite album covers of all time, all right? This is, um, uh, the model's name was Dolores. Uh, shoot, I forgot her. I forgot her. Her full name. I know it's Dolores. And um, they used like shaving cream, like a combination mm -hmm. of like shaving cream and stuff like that. She says it was really hot that day and because they were under the lights, it kept like melting off and they kept oh, having wow. to cover her. Uh, but anyways, iconic cover, or what do you think? Yeah, it's cool. And uh, our uh, listeners should be familiar with, um, with the music too. And so. we, I'm gonna, uh, since we're almost, are we done with the music? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, when we, I was cleaning the garage, I found this um, little uh, 45. And I don't know if it's real, it's Mercury Music. It's... <laughs> wow, it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like a 45 that came for, the, for free, like from, on something. Yeah. It's made out of cardboard. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? And yeah, there's stuff in there. Uh, I wouldn't play it on, on my stuff. I like how it says high fidelity on here. And it says title. Can't read that. It's too small. By, I don't know, date. October 9th, 1948. So maybe, you know, we used to go to those booths and make the records. It's probably one of those, huh? I guess. I'll have to, do you want to clean it for me? Or no, it won't get cleaned. Uh, well, yeah, we'll see what we could do with this. But, um, sure. Or I can just try to put it play in. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty weird. I pretty know. cool, huh? Anyways, are you hungry, Gracie? That's a collectible. Yes. We are going to be doing something cool, all right? We're going to be trying all these barbecue joints. And we're going to be starting with our favorite, uh, Chris and Pitts here in Downey. Uh, Chris and Pitts has been there since, uh, 1940s, I think. Wow. I mean, Gracie's... Gracie's parents, parents had, had the reception there. Had their wedding reception there. It's a staple. And the thing is, is, you know, finding barbecue out here is pretty difficult. You know, it's either a, a pop-up restaurant or, you know, a place that opens for like two hours. And then there's a line around the block. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't like to wait for food anymore. Me neither. You know, it's a drag, man. So uh, we're, we're going to try as many barbecue joints as we can, including like some pop-ups and places like that, um, starting with Chris and Pitts. All right. Oh, wow. Just some napkins and a big old tray of ribs, baby backs, oh, spare wow. ribs and some chicken all right so we're gonna end the show like this gracie oh, wow any shout out to gracie i already mentioned at the beginning of the show how about again okay i will be having a show at flappers on saturday 23rd um flappers on saturday burbank everybody yes. get out there what time gracie seven o'clock seven o'clock and if you want you can always go to my <clears throat> gracie dot graciearmijo.com and all, uh, all the information will be there. GracieArmijo.com. There it is. There's the link. There's our socials. If you're ever in the city of Downey, you gotta try Chris and Pitts. Mm-hmm. It's a classic. They all have right. one in Bellflower. They have one in, uh... In the city of Whittier. Uh-huh. If you're in Southern Cal, come on out and try Chris and Pitts. Everything's good there. Their chicken. Uh-huh. Their, uh, spare ribs. Mm -hmm. Baby back ribs. See you guys next time. We have a special announcement. Oh, yeah. Special announcement, everybody. Special, you guys. Should we just give them a little? Little? It has to do with that. Special announcement next week. Don't miss it, everybody. I'm Glenn the Baker. And I'm Gracie, the comedian. No. 
Bye, guys. Thank you.